Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing some overclocking on my old Phenom 2 X4 955 Black. A while back I released a video using this processor as an example of pairing an old CPU with a new GPU. I got several comments about why I wasn't overclocking, and simply the motherboard I was using just couldn't seem to handle any overclocks. A few weeks ago my friend Kyle built a new computer and was getting rid of his old stuff. Turns out he had quite a nice motherboard that was compatible with my Phenom 2, so now that I have the motherboard to support it, I did some overclocking just for fun. I know last time I used my GTX 1070, but this time I'm sticking to this build's GTX 960. In my opinion it offers a more realistic look into what kind of performance this era of computer will get, and honestly you shouldn't be pairing a 1070 with a Phenom in the first place. Other than the Phenom and the 960, the build is using a Hyper 212 EVO CPU cooler, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a 600 watt Corsair PSU, and the motherboard I mentioned is the ASRock 870 Extreme 3. So for this benchmark I ran through 4 games, Fallout 4, Hitman, Bioshock Infinite, and Tomb Raider, all at 1080p. I thought these would provide a mixed bag of GPU, CPU intensive titles that might show how different games react to an overclock. I was able to obtain a stable 4GHz overclock, which is 800MHz over stock. I was almost able to get a 4.2GHz overclock, but when playing games the system would blue screen no matter how much voltage I pushed to the CPU. With this overclock I ended up with a multiplier of 20 and a CPU vCore voltage of 1.425V. Also for anyone interested my Northbridge overclock was 2.2GHz at stock voltage. Ok so technical stuff aside, how did the games do? As you can see from these graphs, the overclock doesn't add a lot in pure FPS. Just like with my FX6350, you're not going to be getting huge FPS spikes in most cases. A better metric for seeing how much performance you're gaining from an overclock is in percentage increases. Average frame rates increased by 8.12% on average. Hitman got the largest gain with 12.82%, Fallout 4 followed close with a respectable 10.41% and both Tomb Raider and Bioshock had only slight gains. The reason for this would appear to be Fallout 4 and Hitman's CPU intensive nature. Both games really take advantage of the extra cycles, whereas the more GPU bound Tomb Raider and Bioshock only get small performance gains. So those are some decent numbers, but where the overclock really shines is in 1% low frame rates. If you don't know, 1% lows are exactly what they sound like. It's the 99th percentile of all frame times in a benchmark. So what that gives us is kind of our worst frame rates, which can tell us how smoothly a game is running and how bad its hitches are. The 1% lows gain the most out of the overclock with an average increase of 13.13%. Hitman again takes home the most gains with an awesome 18.75% increase. Surprisingly Bioshock went up by just over 15%. So while it didn't gain much on the average, the game was running considerably smoother with the overclock. Fallout 4 followed close behind with 14.28, and unsurprisingly Tomb Raider only got a 4.34% gain. Tomb Raider's lack of gains shows how GPU heavy the game really is. It's very light on the CPU, so its gains will always be smaller compared to CPU heavy games like Fallout 4 and Hitman. Overall I think this 800MHz overclock shows how well a Phenom 2 955 Black will fare. Others have been able to get overclocks in the range of 4.5 GHz, but from what I've read, 4 GHz seems close to what other people have been able to get while being stable. I could have run these benchmarks in an unstable 4.2 GHz, but that would defeat the point. If you're overclocking, you don't want to be blue screening every 15 minutes. And before anyone asks, if you go beyond 4, you will of course get a few more FPS gains, but these charts should give a ballpark of what kind of gains to expect on an overclock with the Phenom 2. I'm no expert on overclocking, but if you have any questions about my setup, let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, share it on all your social medias or whatever. Coming up soon I've got a few videos planned, one is a bit of a wrap up on my feelings of Fallout 4, and the other is a review of Uncharted 4. If you want to see those and some of my other benchmarking videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thanks for watching.